Hello guys, welcome back to Racketology. My name is Zach and today I'm going to be showing you how to string using a one-piece stringing method on your frames. Now before we actually get started in me showing you directly on how to string it, I need to go over a few ground rules that come with something like a one-piece stringing pattern. In comparison to say something like a two-piece, which could be used universally basically, a one-piece has certain rules that we have to kind of stick to. For one, manufacturers don't all cover it. Head and Yonix specifically don't cover a one-piece on their newer frames and can actually void your warranty if, say, something like a break happens and they notice that it's strung using a one-piece stringing method. So you want to be very careful about that, especially if you're stringing customer frames. Make sure to always warn them about that, even if they're admin about a one-piece. At least inform them that that is a possibility. Now the second part is that you have to make sure that the mains on the racket end at the top of the frame instead of the bottom. Because we are just going to be using a regular one piece, it's not going to be an ATW or box pattern, right? So you need to make sure that your mains end at the top, so that way your crosses can start from the top, right? You don't want it to start from the bottom because the way that it's going to deform the frame is going to kind of bend it out of shape and it's going to put stress in the wrong areas of the hoop that you don't want it to. You want that stress to, to move equally down and you want to equalize the pressure from top down. Um, so those are the kind of ground rules that you're dealing with whenever you're stringing in one piece. But now that we got that, let's go ahead and get started. Let's jump right in. Go ahead and locate the end of your string. And we're going to go ahead and measure off eight of our mains for our short side. So just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now usually after you add extra to make it sure that you make it back over to the tensioner, that would be it, right? Because then you just make your tie off on your main. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and measure off two crosses. One, two, and make sure I can make it over the tension head. Because I like to make my tie off on the crosses instead. This is going to include a starting clamp. So just realize that if you want to follow the way that I do it, you do need a starting clamp. If not, we'll then just tie off on your mains and then continue from the other side with your crosses and you'll be fine. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get stringing. Okay, and then here 
would be where you'd usually make your tie off if you were doing the, the regular way or if you didn't have a starting clamp. So you know you'd just go up to your main and you would go ahead and just make your tie off. And you see you would just be tying off right here. So there you go. That's how you would do it for that one. And then this side would just start your mains right here. Or start your crosses, sorry. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and make sure this one finishes on a cross. So any of you guys that do have a starting clamp, feel free to do that as well. I find it really useful. All right, now if you're following the same pattern as me, then you would go ahead and return up to the top. But if you're not, then you would have already made your main tie off. And then once you got over to the end, you would technically already be done with your regular one piece. But if you are doing it like how I'm doing it, using something like a starting clamp up top, go ahead and clamp that back off.
right. So this is going to be the last tile right here. Okay, and with that, we finished doing a one piece. So just remember if you're doing it the regular way, you go ahead, finish with your mains, and you just tie off right on your main. Then your other side, you just go ahead and complete your crosses. Or if you wanted to follow along and do exactly as I did, which I do recommend, but you do need a starting clamp, then you're gonna go ahead and take that one, and then you're gonna have to see on how many crosses you need to cover up the top, and then have the other one go back down and do your crosses. All right, but other than that, that's how we're going to go ahead and do a one piece stringing method on a tennis racket. Anyway, guys, take care, and hopefully this has been helpful to you. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video, guys. Go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel. That way you could stay up to date with all the future content that we're going to be posting. Other than that, take care and happy hitting.